Hello everyone and welcome back to the show that today will be a four-way free-for-all featuring high-flying kicks, radical stunts, and tons of henchmen passing away from broken arms. It's a martial arts feast for the ages that pits masters of their domain against one another for ultimate black belt supremacy. Your contestants are Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Donnie Yen, and your judge is a guy who took three weeks of karate classes in sixth grade, mainly because mom said we could stop at KFC on the way home. These four movie stars don't need no stunt doubles, and in some cases, don't even need a shirt. Unlike me. Here's how we'll determine your winner. Round one, box office. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. Round three, iconic moments. Then we'll do a wild card round that will either settle the score or dig me further into a pit from which there is no escape. The mythological Bruce, the legendary Jackie, the stone cold Jet, and force sensitive Donnie are about to step into the ultimate battle from which there is no escape. Unless they want to X out of the vid and watch something else. That's the only way! So let's get it on. Round one, box office. Since all of these fellows are international superstars, we're relying on the worldwide box office to help us settle this score. The icon Bruce Lee might be fighting with one hand behind his back here, as he only had six films to cement his legacy, and of those, only Enter the Dragon has reliable box office data. But it's still a high bar for his three counterparts, as that film grossed an impressive $535 million worldwide total. Blink and you might miss a young stuntman in that flick named Jackie Chan, whose Nintendo game really didn't capture the kinetic essence he has. But a Chan movie on the big screen? That's still a global event to this very day, and for his career, his flicks have grossed a total of $8 billion, good for a per-movie average of $167 million. Chan has been a star overseas and here for much longer than Yen or Jet Li, and his voiceover as Monkey in the Kung Fu Panda franchise alone has padded his stats to the tune of $2.1 billion for that trilogy of animated films. It is me! You bestie! Speaking of franchises, that's how most Americans, myself included, first came about Jet Li. He was a boiling, menacing presence in Lethal Weapon 4, and has also had memorable turns in the Expendables films and Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. All told, his 30 movies pose the biggest threat to Jackie Chan's box office supremacy, as they've amassed $4 billion total for the highest per film average on the roster at $170 million every time he's on the poster. Speaking of franchises again, Donnie Yen is now synonymous with the Ip Man films. Oh, and he also gained moral worldwide notice thanks to his role as Cheered Imwe in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. He is certainly one with being a box office force, as his roles combined for $3 billion total for a per flick average of $120 million. The deeper you get into Yen and Jet Li's catalogs reveal just how massive their films are, including ones that might not have made much of a financial impact stateside. However, the same could be said for Jackie Chan, whose films were cult hits in the United States until he burst out with Rumble in the Bronx. And for every giant hit we know of, like the Rush Hour trilogy of films, he's also done films like Dong Fu Yujia, which earned $266 million. He's simply been raking in cinematic bread for longer and just about as efficiently as any superstar, period, and he can at least put the Beach Boys on my radio anytime he wants. I love Beach Boys. Jackie Chan wins the round and is off to a one to nothing, to nothing, to nothing lead. That's right, I'm the master. Round two, tomato meter slash audience score. Jackie surges to an early lead, but whereas career length and volume could help in round one, too many rotten movies could be a penalty for the tomato meter section. Brace yourself, kiddies. Jackie Chan has been incredible in each and every one of his 54 movies which grace the tomato patch, but he's also the only actor here who has a rotten average clocking in at a very respectable 54% with critics and 57% for his audience score. What's more amazing is how healthy this entire cast of legends is with both metrics. Bruce Lee's six films get him the highest overall average at 77% on the tomato meter and 75% for the audience score. Both measurements agree that Enter the Dragon is his best work as it's at 92% and 90% respectively. In fact, his only rotten outing on the tomato meter is his last work, Game of Death, which feels a tad unfair. He passed away during production and stand-ins were used to complete the movie. So now pressure's on Donnie Yen and Jet Li to take on the man, the myth, the dragon. But Jet Li has got some legendary fists, or at least one fist. Although I bet he's pretty ambidextrous. 
I digress. Fist of Legend is his crown jewel in the tomato meter, garnering a perfect 100% and helping his overall average to a fresh 60% over 30 films. Crowds love him even more as his audience score is at 66%. Even lower rated flicks like Cradle to the Grave, The One, or White Snake feature so much Lee badassery, they're hard to resist. But I can confidently recommend Hero, which is tied atop his tomato meter at 95%. But Jet Lee, he ain't the only star of that movie. Ladies and gentlemen, Donnie Yen is also in Hero. However, that only earns the silver medal in his filmography as Ip Man 2 leads the way at 96% atop the tomato meter. Other top fives in Yen's library include Once Upon a Time in China 2 at 92% and Ip Man 4 at 87%. Damn, this dude's sequels even do well with critics. Oh, and I'm getting word now that, yes, I can confirm, Jet Li also appears in Once Upon a Time in China 2, which makes this call even tougher. Donnie has 26 films total here, and he boasts the same 65% fresh average on both critical and audience scales. And although he does go all the way down to 11% rotten for Highlander Endgame, he was the best part of that movie. He put the whole damn thing on his back. There can be only one, and it should have been him. Well, at least in this round, he appears to be the one. Wait, that's a Jet Li movie. Damn it. Okay, look, Donnie's got the higher average. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yen wins the round and is on the board. But I have a feeling we haven't heard the last from Jet Li. Yeah. Round three, iconic moments. So we have four of the baddest men to ever walk, run, or jump kick on planet Earth, and now we only have one round to determine who's given us the most enduring moments in cinematic martial arts history? No, don't worry, we still have the wild card round too. We could be here for a while, and that's not even counting all those great Jackie Chan outtake scenes. Chan gets an early lead here, as he not only can kick ass, he can be genuinely hilarious when doing so. <laughs> And on purpose, not like Steven Seagal playing acoustic guitar kind of way. And while the Rush Hour trilogy makes for good showcases of all these talents, I'd also point to his work opposite Owen Wilson in Shanghai Nights for big action and hearty guffaws. If it's more straight up action you dig, Chan has plenty of that in stock too. The Catquaw Maneuver in Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, and the Coal Fight in Legend of Drunken Master and Highlights, and he also takes on a whole army in that movie. A whole army! My personal favorite of Chance is my soft spot for Rumble in the Bronx. The market fight showcases the guy willing to do anything to entertain us, even if it leaves his body battered, bruised, or stuck in a ladder. He actually broke his ankle performing one of the stunts in that movie. The Forbidden Kingdom also features intense battles between Chan and our next competitor, Jet Li. Li's skills are legendary, and what really separates him from the pack is his willingness to fight anyone, including fellow martial arts masters and movie stars. His introduction to many Americans was him beckoning on Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon 4, and he's arguably the best part about that movie. Sorry, Chris Rock. He also takes on Ivan Drago himself in The Expendables and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason Statham in War. But for pure Lee greatness, I'd point you towards Kiss of the Dragon. When it's him taking on a different skill set in boxing, the atmosphere becomes electric, and that's the same flick where he battles the twins. <laughs> no, 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 I don't mean Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Dickhead. Lee's superior quickness and reflexes match wit so well against Donnie Yen in both Hero and Once Upon a Time in China 2, but for my money, and you can tell how I dress that I'm loaded, I'm going with Jet Li in Fearless. The end tournament basically makes me want to train in martial arts and reminds me I'll never get close to being that good at anything. But I am decent at Star Wars trivia, so I knew Donnie Yen would be an amazing addition to the galaxy far, far away canon. And he didn't disappoint. He's so effortless in his ability to dominate a gaggle of stormtroopers in one scene, and then calmly explain his oneness with the Force in the next. I knew he'd be great at the sci-fi action. I wasn't prepared for how much deeper he'd make me consider my own religion. Yes, I am a Jedi, like my father before me. But if you bring up Donnie Yen, you gotta give some love to Ip Man. The first film in the franchise sets the tone with a well-choreographed brawl against Louis Fan, and then in Ip Man 4, we get another true badass when it's Yen taking on Scott Adkins. Not of the Adkins diet, but I'm willing to bet dude does keto. Perhaps the longest and most brutal battle in Ip Man lore is in the second film, when Donnie is pitted against Sammo Hung. Whether it's a rad vehicle chase with Vin Diesel and Triple X, or a very different spin on tic-tac-toe in Drunken Tai Chi. 
Donnie Yen continually proves he's not just a star, he's the embodiment of martial arts philosophy. Which brings us to the man who inspired so many to take up the ancient arts, Bruce Lee. I love the big boss fights because they teach us that sometimes you need a good defense before you can go on the attack. The disarming knife fight is so well done, as is the final battle, and years before a new generation learned what nunchucks were from a party dude turtle, Lee took us all to school in his last film, Game of Death. While we're on the topic of school, I don't think I'd pick too many fights at karate class. I'd rather just watch Fist of Fury again. Enter the Dragon might be the gem for Bruce Lee battles. The basement fight and Lee quickly dispensing of O'Hara still hold up to this day. But there's no way I can leave this round before reminding everyone that Bruce Lee barely broke a sweat against, yep, you guessed it, Chuck freaking Norris, the toughest man on earth or Mars, whose chin alone has sent 38,000 people to the ER, Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, and while you're recovering from that, Lee also defeated the NBA's all-time leading scorer. No, it's not Michael Jordan. No, it's not LeBron James. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Learn your basketball history, kids. Or go watch Airplane. I'm the co-pilot. But for all of the iconic moments Bruce Lee delivered, for me, this category is simply about who would I rather watch fight on screen the most? Every one of these talents is worthy of your box office money, but Jet Li is my go-to for controlled intensity, masterful focus, and lightning quickness. He can also act, whether it's as a noble hero or a menacing villain. He may not have the comedic timing of Jackie Chan or the serene presence of Donnie Yen, but pound for pound, Jet Li is my best bet for delivering mesmerizing scenes of pure martial artistry. Round three goes to him, and now it's time for the wild card round. And now it's time for said wild card round, Legacy. Since we're talking about movies featuring centuries old fighting techniques, we might as well figure out who people will be talking about centuries from now. All of these gents will have a place in cinema lore with good reason. I could attempt to summarize what Jet Li has meant to both the Asian Pacific American community and the world at large, but it's more accurate to hear his words. The message of Hero is that the suffering of one person can never be as significant as the suffering of a nation. Unleashed shows us that violence is never a solution, and Fearless tells us that the biggest enemy of a person could be themselves. According to Lee, the greatest weapon is a smile, and the largest power is love. Without a doubt, one of the biggest reasons we love Jackie Chan is his smile. He feels like an everyman without trying to be, yet we can still buy into it when he can beat the crap out of everyone around him and sometimes himself in the process. Wow. The Police Story movies best show what Chan is all about, entertainment at any cost. His stunts are absolutely bonkers in that film, but he also reveals his heart. It's the magical elixir of affability, risk-taking, and kung fu artistry that makes Jackie Chan the most unique of actors. And it's probably why we'll always show up in droves to watch his movies. Donnie Yen's star power certainly rose in the United States after his winning turn in Rogue One, but his legacy had already been cemented thanks in large part to the success of the Ip Man franchise, but I'll also give anyone Kill Zone to watch. Come back after seeing that and name anyone that could mess with Donnie Yen. His embracing of MMA makes him competitive in this round as his fight scenes feel authentic with moves you could see on Fight Island any given Saturday night. Oh, and if it's street cred you want, Yen once reportedly put eight guys in the hospital because they were harassing his girlfriend. He's one with a force, but if you mess with his lady, it's a different story. And it's a quote from Yen's website that leads us to our final challenger. I take martial arts into a whole philosophy. I respect Bruce Lee so much because his whole martial arts is about the way to live. Bruce Lee embodied not just what it means to be an action movie star, he cultivated an aura around him that was part badass, part gentle soul, all real. Lee's parents got him off the streets and into organized competition thanks to martial arts legend Yip Man. In fact, Bruce Lee was so versatile, in one year he won a boxing competition and a cha-cha dance-off. That, folks, is range. But mystery and tragedy also contribute to the legacy of Bruce Lee. We'll inevitably always ask what could have been about a talent that the world lost so young. The same could be said for his son Brandon. That's certainly fair, but let's not lose sight of what he gave us all before his passing. A new way to look at movies, sure, but also a fresh approach to life. 
Recently, the documentary Be Water provided new insight into the development, matriculation, and career of Bruce Lee, and in the process, acted as further evidence why this man was so crucial to the martial arts actors that would follow. It's too easy to say Bruce walked so Donnie Yen, Jackie Chan, and Jet Li could run, because Bruce also ran. And despite the unfortunate fact that his was a sprint and not a marathon, it doesn't dull any of the shine from Bruce Lee's legacy. He wins the round emphatically. I mean, again, he did beat up Chuck Norris. And we have us a good old-fashioned four-way. Not, not that kind of four-way. It's not right. And since each combatant won a round in today's show, they all have a credible case as to why they should win the whole thing. Is Bruce Lee's gigantic shadow big enough to conquer all foes? Or perhaps it's Jet Li's skill or Donnie Yen's philosophy that could put them over the top? My winner is none of them. It's Jackie Chan. I don't know who I'd take in a street fight, but I know who the most entertaining brawler would be, and that's Jackie Chan. It's impossible to overstate how appealing Jackie Chan can be without even uttering a single line of dialogue. It doesn't matter if it's his fists, or feet, or face taking the lead when he's on screen, you probably shouldn't attempt to blink. His sense of humor, especially when it comes to self-deprecation, make him relatable to us in a way few stars ever have. Here we have one of the greatest talents combat has ever seen, yet he has problems and makes mistakes, loves like anybody else. Celebrities, hey, they're just like us. Jackie isn't really like us, but he never fails to bring us along for the ride. Bruce Lee, Donnie Yen, and Jet Li all fought well and made strong cases, and I'm so happy I don't have to choose a silver medalist today. Jackie Chan is your winner. Get up! Get on up, That's dope, isn't it? Keep making movies, Jackie. Just don't hurt yourself too much, and if you do, make sure it's in the outtakes during the credits. I'm Mark Ellis, none of my flubs are going to be in these outtakes, and I'll see you next time on Versus.